All right, hey again, honors chemistry. So we're gonna continue on with our activity, distinguishing ionic, molecular, and atomic solids. We last ended in the last video putting together some generalizations about the different rows of solids. Here are row one solids, and our generalization that they were mostly like elements. Some were connected, some were not, but our generalization is that the basic particle is an element. Some may be connected, some may not be connected. It's looking though that the only thing that's connected was the metal atoms. Then we had our second row of solids. These are mostly molecules and they were never connected. So molecules that are never connected. And then finally our last one, our last generalization were ionic compounds and they were always connected. So we had ionic compounds that were always connected. All right, so now we're going to continue on to part three of this activity in this next video. What do you think are some rules for identification for identifying the three classes of solids? We have atomic solids, molecular solids, and ionic solids. Right now, I'm going to tell you that there is a name for these solids. Row one solids are known as atomic solids. Row two, I'm going to tell you, are known as molecular solids. And then finally, row three are ionic solids. So we already wrote down some generalizations in a previous, in our, in our, our notes right here, but let's kind of condense them together. It says, what do you think are some rules of, for identification for identifying the three classes of solids? Your rules for identification must allow for correct classification of any substance, identify the type of particles involved in the class of solids, specify the types of connections or lack of connections between particles belonging to this category. So if you want, you could pause this video and try and come up with it on your own and then see what I am going to synthesize for us, or you could just follow along with our synthesis. So let's go with atomic solids. It looks like our row one atomic solids were right here. They could be metals or non-metals, but they were atoms. So atomic solids, let's say the um, atoms are the types of particles involved. And those atoms could be metal or non-metal. And let's, and that's just like something like that, atoms. Or I can have atoms that are connected to each other. Okay. Now it looks as though if I were a metal, I'm connected all throughout. So metals are connected throughout. And we'll generalize and say that nonmetals are not really connected. We had graphite that consisted of our nonmetal carbon, graphite, our nonmetal carbon here, but it wasn't connected throughout. They were just connected kind of like in sheets. Here is argon, which is our it's it's our group eight. It's a gas, it's a nonmetal, they're not connected at all. And then here is copper, which is a metal connected throughout. So here are some generalization rules for atomic solids. They have to be made up of atoms. There could be metal or non-metals. Metals are going to be connected throughout. Non-metals, not really connected. Okay. Um, all right. Let's do molecular solids. So looking at our molecular solids, we actually had huge generalizations here. We said that, that the base unit are molecules, right? So we're going to say um, molecules are the types of particles. And so it'll look like maybe something like that, or maybe if we had something like that. doesn't matter, right? These are our types of particles, and they're going to be um, containing that as our basic particle. Types of particle is the base unit. And never connected. 
Also, these molecules consist of just non-metals. So if I had CO2, or if I had ClF3, these are all non-metals. If I were to see their solid structure, they would be a bunch of molecules, and they wouldn't even be touching. Look at all of our molecules here. For the molecular solids, they are touching them within the molecule, but they are not touching between molecules. And then finally, for ionic solids, it looks like our base unit are ions. We got metal cations and non-metal anions as base unit. All right, and we're going to say that they're all always connected. So if we look at row three solids here, they're all completely connected, right? And in the formula, we have metal and non-metal, so we had like NaCl. Um, what if I had Na2SO4 or NaHCO3 or CaCl2? Their structure is going to be all connected, and they consist of ions. And so that was our generalization. And those are our three generalizations, so those are our rules. So if I want to identify an atomic solid, the, the base particle is going to be an atom, may or may not be connected. Probably if it's a metal, it's connected, um, not, and it's con connected completely. Um, Non-metal would be um, not really connected. Let's also help specify and say one color. Let's help with that. So if I'm looking at a structure and it's an atomic solid, I should only have one color. Look at all my atomic solids. They only have one color, okay? Looking at my molecular solids, I can have more than one color or one color. So I really can't use color because um, sulfur is a molecule and it's all one color and connected. So the big thing could be, could be one or more colors. And the only thing that's going to distinguish that is that they're not connected to each other. Whereas ionic solids, they're going to be two colors, two or more colors. And they're all connected. So looking at our um, ionic solids here, and mine are in color, and if you printed out in color, you could see it too. They're all connected, and I have multiple colors. Looking at my dry ice and sugar, they're multiple colored too, and if we have black and white, it'll be shading, but they're not connected. Sulfur is the only weird one. We'd have to really look and see that this is a molecule here. One color, though. This is an element. Element is a substance word, molecule is a particle world, word, and they're not connected to each other, they're just connected within. All right, so we're going to use these three sets of rules here now, and you're going to eventually move on to next, when you have the chance, to worksheet number six. Worksheet number six now is going to ask you to identify the types of solids, and you have the formula and the structure there, um, and then Identify the type as atomic, molecular, or ionic. And then looking at the melting and boiling point, identify what state of matter it would be on the Earth, the Moon, or on Pluto. And you have to use the temperatures of the Earth, Moon, and Pluto. There is going to be a separate video in which I walk you through worksheet number six. But if you don't want to wait, you can move on to worksheet number six after getting our rules. So for example, if I look at something like, let's look at a new one. If I had PBI2, I have two different colors here. This is an ionic compound, metal and nonmetal, and it's all connected. I have a dark purple and light purple. Boom, ionic. That's a type of solid. But if I look at something like H2O2, I have two different colors. They're not really connected at all. Two different colors, not really connected. Molecular. We're going to do more of this in another video. 
All right, honors chemistry. That concludes part two of the activity for distinguishing ionic molecular and atomic solids. Make sure you save or have this on hand if you want to help you distinguish and identify what type of solids are atomic solids, molecular solids, and ionic solids.